Hello everybody, this is Monster Tam Bloba here with another Kinder Traits video. This time we're going to be looking at another Alpha Kinfolk Guide, and for everyone's favorite acorn, Kodoki. So like always, we're going to start things off with the move set. While it's not exactly a move, I want to start off by talking about Kodoki's passive, Germate. This passive allows Kodoki to plant their roots and slowly begin to regain health so long as they remain motionless for a moment. This means you can't use any moves, you can't do any kind of attacks, summon any kind of minions, dodge, jump, anything. You have to stay completely still. But minions you've already summoned will work as normal. I recommend you use cover on maps like Riverside and Ruins to, before you try to activate this. Or if you're hard pressed to find cover, like maybe on Forest or certain spots on Riverside, you can try to summon some of your vines to create a makeshift wall and use stunner flies to help uh, cover you while you heal up a bit. Another good way you can use it is you can put your opponent to sleep, then heal for a small amount before using a combo on them. Just make sure not to wait too long before you pull off the combo or else you might be in trouble there. Now on to Kodoki's basic attack called Gaia Volley. This would be your main way of dealing damage with Kodoki at the moment as your other attacks just don't really do that much. This is not to say that the other abilities are bad, it's just that they don't really do a lot of damage. Even Gaia Volley doesn't do a lot of damage, so you're not going to be really using Kodoki as a DPS. The main times you're going to be using this attack is along with your minions to help keep melee characters in bay. And if you have good enough aim, you can kind of get away with pinging at other ranged kinfolk and being annoying. And, and then maybe getting them to try to come in close where you can get off and sleep on them. Next up, we have Kodoki's one and only buff, Growth. Growth raises the user's physical and special attack by one stage. A buff move you need about two seconds to pull off on average without being attacked in order to get the full benefits of the buff. If you're attacked before the two seconds are up, you will not get the benefit of the buff and the animation will not end, so it's extremely risky. It will almost never get pulled off on any map other than Ruins. If you do choose to use buffs, which I recommend you do not do, then you should probably try to put your opponent to sleep or get some vines and sunflies set up around you before you try to pull it off. And now we come to what is one of the, if not the best move in the game at the time writing this guide, Spore Dance. With this move, you have to be very close to hit, but once you do land it, you have so many options that you can do while your opponent's asleep. Some of those basic things you can do are, one, heal yourself with your passive, two, pull a buff off, Three, summon wicked thorns and knock your opponents into them with a well-placed twister, which will do a huge amount of damage. And in addition to these ideas, you'll more than likely have time to use at least two of the things that I've listed at both before your opponent wakes up. So you could heal, then use wicked thorns, or buff, then use wicked thorns, like that. There's also the more effective route. If you have other kinfolk still alive, you can switch to a different kinfolk like Ember, for example, and pull off a devastating combo like that. Next up, we have Thrash. With Thrash, you unleash a barrage of five long-range melee attacks directly in front of you. While the damage can be good, this move doesn't really suit Kadoki's play to style at the time of riding, and I would recommend avoiding this move and favor of others but if you do decide to use this move it can be useful if you try to catch your opponent off guard as they round a corner and maybe sneak in a fair bit of damage there otherwise you could use it while they're asleep but there's a lot more powerful combos you can use while your opponent's asleep now on to twister with twister you launch a fast moving gust of wind that tracks nearby targets now tracking doesn't really come into play and i think it might be bugged right now but i'm not 100 percent sure with this move, at the time of riding, the knockback effect is way more important. It can be used in an emergency situation to get your opponent back if they're getting too close to you. And you can also use it with Spore Dance, using it to knock your opponents into Wicked Thorns that I mentioned before. Now we have Kadoki's first minion move, Stunnerflies. Stunnerflies allows you to summon a small swarm of flies that will chase your opponent and do a small amount of damage to them. The real appeal of this move is in the name, though. With each tick of damage, they stagger your opponent, stopping them from moving or attacking for about a second. This can give you a chance to switch to a different kinfolk and hit them with a powerful attack, such as Ember's Explosion, or maybe put Shovel's Quicksand to make life extra difficult on them. 
but most of the time if you're only going to be using Kadoki like everyone else is dead it's just going to make life difficult for them as you ping them with your basic attack and hide behind your thorns and heal with your passive or something like that now last but not least we have wicked thorn you summon three vines that last about 15 seconds these vines strike enemies that come near dealing damage and knocking them away this is a wonderful move i recommend you always take with Kadoki. you can use this move to keep melee users back used to provide cover for yourself as mentioned before it's very useful in sleep combos one thing that might not be obvious is how you can use your thorns to block your opponent's path on a map like ruins giving yourself some good map control for example if they want to go through one of the doorways you pop a thorn there and then they have to go around overall it's one of the most versatile moves in the game and you will almost always get a little bit of use out of it each game you go into but now we're moving on to general tips that's last of the moves in general with kadoki you want to keep stunnerflies on your opponent as much as you can and fall back when you get hurt even a little bit so that you can heal with your passive kadoki is a great kinfolk to use inku's attack into dodge tech with it will let you hit sleep much easier in brief you want to use spore dance a split second before you dodge and then you'll be able to hit it at a much greater range some useful items for Kadoki would be honestly anything other than Black Mask, but I'll talk about a few of the different ones here. With Peach and Rations, both of these are, can go good with making Kadoki even harder to get rid of. Out of them, I'd recommend Rations over Peach, as Kadoki's low HP makes Peach less useful than on another kinfolk like Embear, for example. And then for Aloe and Chrysanthidote, when it comes to picking which one, I would recommend Aloe for healing burns over Chrysanthidote for the Poison Hill, as you're much more likely to fight an bear than Skullkin when playing as Kadoki at this time. And then Coffee Bean. This can be an odd one, as it's somewhat useful if you want to win sleep trades with other Kadokis, making you into an effective counter to other Kadokis, anti-Kadoki Kadoki, if you will. And now we're moving on to matchups. I'd say that Kadoki is one of the strongest kinfolk in the game right now, but that doesn't mean he's unstoppable. So now we will talk about what matchups will be in your favor and how to make the best of the ones that are not. Starting off with what is likely Kadoki's biggest hurdle, Ember. Pretty much all of Ember's moves can mean trouble for an unprepared Kadoki. You have to be careful to watch out for the animation before explosion goes off as it'll almost one-shot you. And you'll need to shield or dodge in time before you get hit by it. If you don't have aloe, getting close is not really an option thanks to Scorch. And even if you do have aloe, then Fire Spin can still give you some problems and knock you back if you're not careful. Top everything off, Ember will also tear through your minions like they're paper with his various powerful attacks. Your best chance with Ember is to run aloe, fight him at range until you can get in close and sleep him and finish him off with a combo. There's not much he can do after you actually put him to sleep as long as he's not using Coffee Bean. If he is using Coffee Bean, then you're just going to have to hope that you can dodge his attacks and summon your minions to help make up for the slack. When fighting a Lumala, though, Kadoki is not a bad choice. Your stunner flies can be very annoying because Lumala has to deal with them and he doesn't have much ways to deal with them and she has to use her righteous light if she wants to go stunner flies, for example. So you can also use your vines to shut down Lumala's most powerful healing moves. Lumala is pretty fast though, so it may be hard to catch her this so that you can use Spore Dance, but once you do hit it, Lumal is pretty much done for. Moving on to Mechid. Mechid's an odd fight. You, per you can pretty easily keep him away with your moves, but you have no real way of killing him before he gets lucky enough to hit you with some Rush or Iron Fist. You have to be careful with your Stunner Flies, as they can the Mechid can use them to buff himself thanks to Rage. But this can also be used to your advantage as a way to lure your opponent's mechid into a trap where you hit them with a status effect, but just be careful with it. At the end of the day, you want to treat mechid kind of like an bear, and then you want to keep him at range until you see a moment you can put him to sleep. Shovelet, much like mechid, will be very hard for you to land a killing blow on, but stunner and flies will be much more helpful in this matchup. Be careful when using sleep on a shovelet, as they most of the time use coffee bean, which will make you waste your cooldown and maybe even lead into a trap. Overall, I would uh, recommend dropping Stunnerflies and keeping the Shovelet out of range if at all possible. You should switch to another Kinfolk after summoning, um, summoning Stunnerflies onto a Shovelet. For Skullkin, Skullkin doesn't have a really a lot he can do to fight against your minions. All you really have to do is be mindful of getting hit by Caustic Cloud and keep out the pressure and you should be fine. 
And lastly, while Slifer may seem scary at first, there's almost nothing he can do to get close to you after you put Wicked Thorns down. And being said, Stunnerflies aren't super useful as he can easily escape them. Time you sleep just right, you can catch Slifer as he comes in for an attack. And with his low HP, he won't survive a strong sleep combo on him. Otherwise, you can just hide around your minions and you'll do fine most of the time. In conclusion, I think that about covers the basics for Kadoki. I expect some aspects such as sleep will be nerfed at some point, but even if they are, the general ideas here will still serve you well enough. I hope you all enjoyed, and until next time, this has been Mostan Blubba, signing off. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Bye-bye.